gathering in the bog side this morning to march to the city center. Hope, optimism even, palpable in a campaign for truth and justice now 47 years old. The news though, intimated first by an embrace, not a press release. Campaigner Eamon McCann hugging a tearful Linda Nash whose brother was shot dead. Still no word, no statement as they walked on again to the Guildhall. Keep the faith, keep the faith, we'll get keep the faith says a supporter. This was going to be a day of mixed news. I was going to say good morning everyone, but I don't think it is. I'd, we have had a terrible disappointment. Just one former soldier charged, but nonetheless another landmark in their campaign. When the Bloody Sunday Justice campaign was launched in 1992, we had three clear demands. To have the Widgery whitewash overturned and replaced by an independent inquiry. To gain a formal acknowledgement of the innocence of all our loved ones and to prosecute those responsible. With today's news, we now achieve our third aim. One soldier then, identified just as F, charged with murdering William McKinney, who filmed these scenes on the day, moments before being shot dead himself. Soldier F also charged with murdering James Ray and the attempted murder of Joe Mahan, seen here, Joseph Friel, Michael Quinn and Patrick O'Donnell. Where would you say your campaign for truth and justice goes now? This is not the end of it. We will continue on and hopefully get the rest of the perpetrators to justice because of their legal means to actually get them prosecuted and bring them before the courts. We will give detailed consideration to the reasons provided for decisions not to prosecute the soldiers with a view to making further submissions to the PPS upon review and we shall ultimately challenge in the High Court by way of judicial review these decisions if they do not withstand proper legal scrutiny. However, public prosecutors stress the level of proof needed for a criminal conviction is necessarily high. For six families, they now have a trial, a process, a suspect, justice. I think it's a shame that the rest of the soldiers who were responsible for the deaths of our people that day uh, and the maiming that, that, that they're going to walk, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to fathom. The killers of other families face no charges and some left today for Cregan and Bogside, too distraught to go to the Guildhall, feeling the killers of their fathers and brothers have got away with it. Linda and Kate Nash did come. They too believe those who shot their brother dead and then shot their father as he tried to help have also got away with it. One soldier, what can I say? So that's not justice, you know. All that interference from the British government, Karen Bradley and Boris Johnson and Theresa May, what chance did we have? Yet no, I was confident, you know, that right will prevail, that we would get prosecutions. So confident. I can't tell you how sad I am. In the Guildhall today, a minute's silence. To reflect on what this campaign has achieved, and those people unarmed and posing no threat, gunned down by British paratroopers that day. Well, we're live in the bog side now with, of course, uh, John Kelly, central figure in the Bloody Sunday campaign for truth and justice, who lost his brother Michael uh, that day. John, thanks for being with us. Um, well, now, one charge against one soldier of a possible 18. This was not what you were expecting or wanting. Certainly not. We went into the City Hotel today with a lot of hope in our hearts that hopefully that we will come away with a, great, a good result, a great result. But as, well, once the PPS started speaking, we had a fair idea of what was going to happen, and the end result was one soldier, Soldier F, being prosecuted for the murder of William McKinney and Jim Ray and the injury of four others. Uh, soldier F, he was responsible for the killing of my brother, and I was actually devastated that he was not included and all the others were not included in this prosecution. But it is justice. It is justice, certainly. It's one, uh, one out of 18. But what we keep saying, a victory for one is a victory for everyone. 
and it's, it's, uh, it's moved in the right direction. We have a victory. We have one now that's going to be before the courts, and uh, certainly we can take solace in that. And the fight goes on legally, of course, up to and including judicial review. Very much so. Uh, after after the, the proceedings today, we have actually spoken to our legal representatives and they have told us that the next step now is to appeal the decisions of the PPS. And if that falls short, then for, they'll be going for a judicial review. So the fight's not finished. It's not over yet because we are uh, determined that we see every one of these soldiers, these killers in a court of law, be prosecuted. And you think there might be a possibility that this one individual who's charged would have to come in, in, in some way to Derry itself? Well, very much so, and we're talking about Soldier F. And this is where it happened, the event happened. This is a jurisdiction, so therefore that being the case, it, should, it will be brought to, back to Derry to be charged in relation to the, the killings on the day. Now, there is talk, of course, possibility of perjury charges down the line. It's pretty obvious your campaign is not about perjury, it's about murder, attempted murder, GBH, yeah. uh, wounding with intent and so forth. That's a sidebar or does it actually mean something? It means certainly something because, again, perjury is a crime and through the woodsery and through the Savile inquiry, these soldiers perjure themselves, they total lies every, every day of the week and therefore it's only right if, uh, that they will be charged with perjury as well. Right, John Kelly, thanks very much for being with us and uh, what John Kelly is saying there I think sums it up there. Campaign very much continues. Back to you in London. Alex, thanks very much. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to the Conservative MP and former British Army captain, Johnny Mercer. I began by asking him if he had sympathy for the families who felt devastated that only one soldier has been charged. Look, I've got sympathy for everyone caught up in this uh, in this case. Uh, clearly, something went wrong on Bloody Sunday, and it's 47 years ago, and this process is still ongoing. I'm just not convinced uh, that this is going to turn out and seeing justice either for uh, the victims or uh, and their families or, or indeed for the servicemen and women who, who I'm afraid, you know, absolutely have a uh, have a stake in this uh, as well. I understand the feelings against the servicemen and women in Northern Ireland, um, but the process has to be fair. Um, and that's what I have concerns about. But when you look at the facts in front of us, Soldier F was accused at the Savile Inquiry of killing a man who waved a white handkerchief and of lying about firing at Michael Kelly until the bullet was traced to his body. Mm. It, it, he surely should face justice over that, shouldn't he? Look, people like me think that uh, individuals who break the law in service should absolutely be prosecuted uh, and we have to um, uphold the highest standards and values that 99.9% .9 of the military abides by every uh, single day. The question here is, is whether there is new physical evidence that shows uh, what, what has gone on, that has shown that previous inquiries into this um, got the wrong result. But the Savile inquiry declared that these killings were entirely unjustified, that troops opened fire first, they weren't under threat. We owe it surely to the families who've been waiting 47 years for some kind of justice. You talk about fairness, surely that is fair to them to try and prosecute. Well, well, I think I think we should try and uh, find out what's gone on. I'm not completely convinced that everything that happened at the Savile Inquiry was completely fair. I think, look, 47 years is a long time for this to have happened. And should an investigation have been done better that had all parties uh, taken part in, that people got some sort of closure from at the time? Absolutely. Isn't there a case that far from uh, putting soldiers on trial, actually the, the chiefs should be the ones in the dock because actually um, if you look at the facts of the Savile inquiry and what that concluded really you should go to the very highest level here. Well again it's, it's a question for prosecutors I, I'm not you know I, I don't think uh, uh, we should um, you know go, go after individuals for decisions made by other people but you know that said soldiers are responsible for their actions um, and they must be held accountable for them. We have to come up with a better mechanism for dealing with historical allegations um, and, and I'm afraid the current offers on the table, whether it's from uh, Northern Ireland Secretary of State uh, Karen Bradley um, or, or other recommendations, I'm afraid, are, are not going to do that. So the statute of limitations that the government's talking about introducing, that doesn't do it for you? Well, in a way, no, because, because any new evidence that shows an individual has broken the law uh, clearly broken the law that comes to light that is, you know, physical evidence that is, is not a statement and someone's got a different view 47 years later. Clear evidence someone has broken the law. That is a fundamental principle of our society that, in, you know, no one is, is beyond the reach of the law. The, it's suggested that the Ministry of Defence has been um, arguing 
with number 10 for months trying to get a new law introduced that would have protected some of the bloody Sunday veterans. Um, do you think that number 10 is dragging their heels because of Brexit? Is there a sort of government par paralysis going on there? I, I'm afraid on, on this issue I, I'm, I'm pretty hard over. Government has um, completely derelicted its duty when it comes to our servicemen and women who are going through uh, this process. And actually days like today make you... Um, you know, feel, feel really uncomfortable uh, in, in this place because, you know, in 2016, when I first came here, I ran the Iraq Historical Allegations Team Inquiry on the Defence Committee. We aired all the dirty laundry there was to wear there around false statements, around paying for witnesses and things like this. Um, and still, still the government have not legislated to stop things like this happening. Johnny Mercer speaking to me earlier.